March 10th, and I'm back in Chicago at the Schaumburg Marriott, awaiting the start of day one of a trance work, basically a therapy class uh, that I'll be starting for three days. Uh, we'll be uh, going in depth into therapeutic, therapeutic use of hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming, NLP. I find this interesting because, you know, I'm looking at uh, examining and exploring different states of consciousness, which would inform my writing about I go and um, being able to induce more a receptive atmosphere that will encourage loving conversations. Both those uh, are current writing projects. And if you don't know who this is, you're listening to MikeRatner.com on Mike'sMastermind.com. And uh, yeah, so the class starts about, well, the registration opens in about an hour, so I thought I would just take a moment to talk about um, you know, I want to revisit Welt's Lush. <laughs> I keep saying it every time I talk about it, like, yeah, this is pretty good, but I'm going to leave it here so I can go back to work on my two book projects, which is Igo, as I mentioned. You can read about the Igo, which is the selfie of the mind, igoism.com. That's the academic paper, I-G-O-I-S-M.com, and lovingconversations.com, because you got to have, like, a dual pitch in case the agent or the publisher doesn't like the one title. You just don't leave the meeting totally digested, <laughs> dejected, or ejected. You sort of say, wait a minute, i got one more. Oh, what's that? And, you know, I think they're both really great ideas, and along with others that I have, I want to really do a series of books, but just want to get this first one going. So either the I go or lovingconversations.com, which one would you vote for? I go or loving conversations, and they both can be mismatched in a nice way. Okay, so anyway, this backdrop thing. So I was thinking, you know, you know, in Welt Slash, we're talking about this is really kind of deep social philosophy. I call it deep because we're talking about um, which in the philosophy terminology, which is love of wisdom, wouldn't be wise to know our the dimensions of our way of being, which is ontology, uh, quality of being meaning and interpretation of one's being and how they're being. So I talk about ultra-being, and that would be sort of one who would really come into their own, uh, whether it would be enlightenment or some epiphany and where they can be and behave better uh, and be able to accomplish and do the things that they want to uh, do and exist within this, uh, you could say, equitable quality, which I'm defining as ultra-being, where we all can help each other and support each other to be at our best. And really, ego is removed. Uh, I mean, one could take joy and pride into their work, but we're not really doing it out of selfish reasons other than maybe you care so much. <laughs> but that in itself is just sort of more a way. In this being onset is um, really a whole other talk. Like, what is this ultra beingness? So I wanted to sort of start with the premise, you know, ground zero here, look at the foundation. So we get grounded in this idea. And so in understanding the wisdom of things would be understand place like where things are right now right I mean you could have great imagination and project yourself into some future fantasy or some other world but what about this world so we're talking about planet earth and how we're living uh, as a species we're talking about the quality of human being so understanding this being is what is the surrounding what are we being in so if you watch my other talks or go to the summation website that sort of gives you a, a taste, sort of an introduction, a well-rounded tour of the different ideas, you could just go to grandtourideas.com, grandtourideas.com, and you get a uh, sampling of these different things. So th in the physics realm, we're talking to any scientist now, say, what is it? Where are we at in this physical plane of our existence? It'll tell you these four components, and within each one, you can really kind of chop it up dice it up, make a nice dinner. We're talking about matter, energy, space, and time. And I use the acronym as I use for many words to make it easier to understand. Call it the MEST. So you could call it the MEST <laughs> universe, because that's what it is. Matter, energy, space, and time. And what makes it up, like what's messed up, is that we don't quite get that. It is universal, this is everywhere, and it's perpetual. It's not likely to change. So the messed up phenomena in this, you could say, misconstrued identity of our human beingness and this experience is that we take things for matter to be something that's the matter. What's the matter? And it could be a lot of areas where that becomes a concern. So it becomes so off-putting and disorientating 
that things are always the matter, and that's a little bit of a concern. So if we're looking at ultra beingness, things would be a little bit more whole brain, you know, got to rain on things, sort of things are copacetic in the way that you're masterfully able to just be with it. Not that we need to manipulate anything, it's just being masterful in the moment, which is really about self. So having a sense of this dwelling where things are less the matter can be a little bit more engaging on this E-level of MEST, matter, energy, space, and time, where the energy then becomes a bit more emotive, you know. Um, we might have a bit more empathy for things, you know, make things easy in the sense that we can sort of get along and explore this realm. And the energy can be pretty dynamic, right, depending on what level, whether it's subtle, sublime, or just like, hey, it's pretty exciting right now. And that's what makes it interesting for me to do this work. So matter, energy, and then the quality of the space, which is pretty much what we're talking about right now, the dimension of space, which does reflect the quality of the relationships. Spatial dynamics like the feng shui, and if your space is cluttered, clear, you know, are people in your space? That kind of thing, right? That's where things become a bit messed up in that dwelling. And then time. And this is, in a short while, I've got to get ready for my class. I'm always wanting to continuing education to enrich myself by exploring and learning more. Sometimes it's just a refresher course, but this is the idea to be more well-informed, to be able to deliver this information, pass it on to others. So matter, energy, space, and time is the mess. So this is the big backdrop, you could say. This is the physical universe. And to have a sense of this philosophically, I think, is wise. Now, the quality of our being and how we're being present within this dwelling takes on the next level, which is the new word that I just came up with a few months ago called Weltslash. I never created a German word. I always got to say that before, and I'm not likely to do many more. Well, I do another one called Irk, but that you got to read about in Weltslash.com. I don't expect you to be able to spell it or remember it, but if you go to GrandTourIdeas.com, at the bottom of the homepage, there should be links. And I reference it in Mike'sMastermind.com quite a bit, too. A lot of .coms, but just write one or two down, you get to where you need to go. All right. So the world slush is kind of important because once we have this big backdrop, and again, I'm just my philosophy, just talking about these ideas here, you might relate to it. It's all right if you don't. But the idea is that, you know, if we're messed up in the realm, how can we get some equitable sense, some buoyancy here? We need to understand sort of the world more and the dynamic and where we are living. And this can be on a quantum scale to something simply being here, home on Earth, and just looking around and going, whoa, you know, I'm lost. And you know, know that you got to sort of get your act together. The Welt slash is simply, the German word Welt is world, the world, and the slash, which I kind of like, it took it from the larger word, or Schlossenheit, which is a term in philosophy itself that I will talk about now. But the slash basically is dwelling. But it's more in the dwelling of what we're building into. We're dwelling a space, something that's been built within this realm, which is the world, the Welt, space, and there's a German word for that called, uh, you know, so it, it, it's, it's the life world. So that's something that we really are exploring here that in the way that we're dwelling. So there is a dwelling within the world. Now, it could be the established structures that we're dwelling in, but also the quality and the pace at which this dwelling is felt and experienced. So in this philosophy, to become a bit more wise, so we wake up to these things, we come out of our story about the world in which we're dwelling in. And to be at least a little bit, as Dr. Job would say, I wear. And what would be I awareness? To have some sensibility of what it is that I'm feeling, the thoughts I'm having, the quality of the words I'm using in which I speak into this world, and the way I'm acting. So it's a little bit reflective and contemplative and introspection, you could say. But it's not dwelling on the navel or really it's getting out of judgment at this level because the world slash is really understanding the dimension of which I'm existing right now. Now that gets into a finer space, which we can call the climate. So let's just backtrack and get to understand. We're really talking about three levels or stages here. There's another writing of mine called the Bideck, B-I-D-E-C-K dot masstrance dot com, where the Bideck is theory of mind. And I'm just taking from existing theory and basically adding this as an acronym that looks at the filters and the levels. And most things are by level, right? You are going to do it or you're not. It's right or wrong, yes or no. So in the by deck realm, in, in making decisions and deciphering what's going on in this world, we are creating a social type climate. And we always use this word atmosphere, you know, there's something felt in that room, but it's a bit more 
misconjoining, that's a new word I'm just making up, because we're disjointing, because I want to call it a metasphere, because it's metaphorical, whatever we're going to refer to, and it's magical a little bit, because we're having this experience that we can relate to, and there is an atmosphere. So let's quantify it, qualify it, and let's give it its own term, metasphere, rather than just talking about vague atmosphere. Oh, the atmosphere in the room is pretty bad. What, it's a stratosphere? Or what, what are we talking about? Trionosphere? No, the metasphere. This is our space dimension between us and the quality felt. It's a vibe. It could be your gut feel. That ought to be a check-in when you come into the metasphere space. The first thing is what I'm feeling. And then you go to an auditory sense, right? So from vestibular, kinesthetic, to auditory, what am I hearing? And most of it's going to be self-talk or what you're thinking about that feeling or what's being said in the room so you're attuned to what's happening and you're not off-putting or off-subject, you know, getting off track, <coughs> Mike. So this idea that, you know, we're feeling vestibular, we're auditorily checking in, now we can visually get a grasp on things. Most people in our society, in a visual learning society, look to see things first and they're interpreting a picture without having a grounded base of what we're talking about here. And that's very important because what you see may not be interpreted properly or right because the first imagery that's the mind's having to comprehend quickly versus checking in first to an intuitive level, which is very grounded, and just say, what am I sensing first? What am I feeling? Intuition can talk to you, but sort of just having a grounded vestibular gut feeling can be revealing to something. If you're uncomfortable, you check in with that. Oh, things seem pretty good here. You check in with that. And then you're listening to it because it's going to tell you something. And then you can get a more complete picture and what you can see. And then it becomes whole because you're integrating intelligence here, right? And you might have to check in multiple times so you get a better, finer understanding. This is the metasphere. And if we can quantify this between us, in our relationships, in our communication, and just in the way that we relate and talk to ourselves and how we incorporate this Weltslosh dimension, we can live finer and less messed up in the way that we're lessening the negativity or the disorientation, and the vlog, these are all different things I talk about and explore a bit more in depth, that are what I call a dis, which is a negative spin on things. We want to have more of a healthy, holistic, things that are a bit more easy and in incorporating of these ideas because they lend itself to more toward love, compassion, the higher attributes that we would talk about in this philosophy. Ultra being, ultra being at our best, ultra being attuned, right? To what this is for you, could be source, hmm? this finer universal intelligence, or just emptiness, and it's a pleasantness, and it's a to me, in my interpretation, the better way of going and being this path forward, if we're looking to make any kind of progress in our life, to be of, to evolve our consciousness and raise it a bit. Ultra being this is an exploration of the being at your best, whatever that would be, at your all, right? Being present, ultra being loving. So within this dimension of examining metasphere, I get a sense of, you know, what's happening, what's what's going on. What's the immediacy of things? And then the weld slosh begins to expand it out a bit more because it could be a, a defining of things, but also determination to the value of this relationship, to, to what we want to do with things or go with what is defined as relevant and important to us. And then we can move forward. Yes? And things become less messed up. We're in the greater dimension to make it really magnificent so it's meaningful. And it's got a lot of value because there's some vision attached to it and there's purpose and passion behind it. And that's your MVP, right? If you want to have a mission, find meaning, right? Make it magnificent. And within this realm, seek this vision and give it value. And you'll find your purpose and you'll live with passion. All right, that's good for now. We're right at 15. Well, 14, perfect. All right, Mike's mastermind.com for more of this stuff. And I hope there's something here of value to talk about. I think we need to have a good sort of grounding idea if we enter into this realm of what is metasphere and defining the welt slosh, which is the world which we're dwelling to have a finer attunement and vibratory sensitivity so we can both see it, define it, relate to it, and comprehend it. In this theory of mine, we'll open up another dimension to, to appreciation, but also exploring this MVP. All right. Again, Mike's Mastermind.com grandtourideas.com for more of these ideas, and thank you so much.